In the last episode, I test fitted the sump into the cabinet, laid out where I want the four Ecotech drivers to be mounted, cut the holes for them, and then finished by repainting and clear coating. Started the wiring on the Apex DIN 8 and finished the Apex section of the cabinet. In this episode, I will build the sump, make yet another trip to HD to pick up essential pieces of the plumbing, and start assembling it all together. glass where it needs to be. So on this drawing, I know it's small, but uh, <laughs> from the edge, there's going to be a piece of glass on eight inches. From the edge of the glass, there's going to be a piece of glass at seven inches. So now I just need to measure the glass out and make my marks. And now the sump has been marked on both sides. So now that the sump has been measured and marked on all sides, including the bottom, now what's left to do and take some of this blue tape and tape on the inside of the sump. I'll be the first to admit I am definitely not good at cutting glass. It seems like every time I try to cut it, it just it, it never works out. So I had my local glass um, company which is like about a mile away, cut me some glass. And it's supposed to be the width of the sump internally and nine inches high. And um, looks like they did a really good job. It's very nice, nice glass and it's pretty thick too. So that's gonna go in there. I have always used GE Silicone 1 for every single one of my aquatic projects, but I like the look of Black Hawk, so I decided to give this brand a shot. It's made by Aquascape Pro, and on the tube it says it's safe for fish, easy to use, forms a watertight seal, so hopefully it lives up to the hype, because there will be a ton of water movement in the main display. Two MP10s and two MP40s in a 50 gallon. I am going to leave which tank I purchased as sort of a surprise, but I bought it back in November 7th, and unfortunately, it's back ordered. From what the distributor told me, the glass is ordered from China. While it's not an uncommon tank, I haven't seen the tank itself used much in any other application other than a frag tank. And when I made the Aquascape back in April, I had in mind of exactly how shallow it would be. So as you can see, this plan has been in the works for a while now. Just think very shallow. I purchased the tank from my local reef store, and just a few days ago, the distributor said the tank will not be ready to ship until after the new year.
just let that sit for about five minutes and then about five minutes when it starts to get tacky I'll remove the tape it's been about 20 minutes so let's go ahead and remove the tape A little windy today so we got to be extra careful look i got caulk all over the place already There we are. Once that dries, let's take a razor blade and clean it up. So now that the one baffle is in place, it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to move on to the second baffle. And I've got it prepared over here. And what I've done, I've just put in some magnets as a, as a riser for the other piece of glass. And I just put them in here as straight as I can. And then I'm going to lay down a bead of caulk around the line and then slide my glass into place and then wait for that to dry and the sump should be done except for a few more accessories I need to put on, which I'll include later. So I think that turned out pretty well. I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'll take my razor blade and scrape off any excess caulk around the edges that I desire. Like that little gunk right there. Hopefully I can fit a razor blade in there. If not, that's the back anyway. Maybe I'll just paint it. You know, remove that. And um, let's go on something else. In my other sump, which was made less than six months ago, I made a heater holder made out of ABS plastic. And honestly, it works so well, I decided to make another for this sump. So now I have to make a quick trip to HD to get some more plumbing supplies. So I just got back, or I just got out of Home Depot. Got a bunch of plumbing stuff. So that's, that's gonna be next on the list. So in my other tank, my overflow looked like this. And to me, it's just too much space in between there. When I mount the glass for the overflow in the tank, it's going to be diagonal and there's not going to be that much room inside of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pieces around here and around here. So instead of being this big, it should look something like that. Now that I got both pieces cut to where I want them, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and make them flush. Now what I got to do next is measure the inside diameter on both put it together and then cut some pipe to fit in between there. So the next thing I'm going to do is instead of using one of those inch caps and then drawing a hole in it, I'm just going to take some ABS plastic, you know, uh, cut out a hole and then super glue that on top. So with the circle cut out, it fits on the top. And then I just drill a hole in the center and stick an airline tube out.
So it's the second day and it seems like everything dried. In some areas it, it still feels like it's a little wet, but I don't think the glass is gonna move. I mean, it has a little play, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna get out of whack so much that it's, it's not gonna line up with that line anymore. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount my heater holder, heater caddy, whatever you wanna call it. And my heaters are, from the bottom of the heater, they're nine inches. So I don't want the bottom of the heater touching the bottom of the glass. So as you can see from the bottom of the glass to the top of the overflow, it's like nine, it's a little past nine inches. So what I'm thinking of doing is mounting the heater caddy or heater holder so it's flush with the glass, but it's also, these dogs are going absolutely crazy. This is the top of the overflow, and this is not gonna touch the glass, but I'm gonna raise it up just enough so when the water does come over the overflow, this won't restrict that water. So I'm gonna lift it up to about there, and then, um, I'm going to caulk it into place and then wait till that dries and we might actually be done with the sump completely. finishing projects will happen. I will finish the sump, finish the plumbing, and oddly enough, make a trip to AutoZone of all places to pick up parts for the custom ATO mount. I hope you are enjoying the videos, and if you are, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and a great way to support the channel. 